person product moment correlation coefficient again um we are using this formula okay um developed by mr call person to measure the strength and the direction um between two variables okay so the formula again is r is equal to n or the size of the sample times the summation of x y minus the summation of x times the summation of y all over the square root of these terms okay so major complex starting formula so yes Meron tayong alternative formula na medyo mas maiksi okay, kumpara sa ating formula na to Pero um, I think mas advisable na gamitin natin yung pinaka-original formula okay, Para mas um, ma-avoid natin yung confusion Especially um, sa mga students na uh, medyo nag struggle sa paggamit ng kanilang mga calculators okay? So um, again, there are different facts about um, the value of the correlation R or yung ating correlation coefficient using the person R. So, again, yung value ng R, number one, your students, um, it is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So, kung meron tayong value na makuha na, um, for example, greater than 1, okay? So, like positive 2 and above, okay? So, ibig sabihin, you need to double check your solution. And then next, guys, the magnitude indicates the strength, okay? Especially yung strength ng ating mismong correlation. So, kung depende sa value na makuha natin. Next is, um, the values of negative 1 and positive 1 as the value of R, okay? It indicates a perfect linear relationship, okay? So, later sa scale natin, makikita natin na kapag positive or negative 1, Meron siyang perfect, okay, um, correlation. And the next is yung sign. So, again, yung sign ng value ng R na makukuha natin, so, yun yung magiging um, indication na kanilang direction. Kung positive yung value ng R, ibig sabihin yung positive correlation ng ating pitag, um, usapan. And then, kapag negative naman, negative correlation. And then, next, last is, if R is equal to 0, okay, it indicates no linear relationship. So, nakita natin yung kanina sa ating session kung ano yung itsura ng mga um, points, okay, kapag no or non-linear relationship, okay? So, again, let's try to answer this one, okay? Sabi dito, example, determine if there is a relationship between the scores in statistics and physics, okay? For example, meron tayo mga students and then yung mga scores na meron sila. So, for example, um, sa scores sa ating stat, okay, we have 3, 9, 10, 12, and 7. Scores naman in physics, meron tayong 5, 8, 10, 9, and 8. So, again, meron tayong mga steps, okay? Meron tayong um, manual computation na ginagamit, okay? Um, especially kapag gusto natin gamitin yung ating formula na nakapresent kanina, okay? So, meron tayong anim na steps. I hope kita sa ating mga screen. So, i-zoom na lang po natin kung sakali mo na medyo malit siya, okay? So, um, first step number one, guys, we need to arrange the data, okay, for the two variables in a column format. Since, um, nag-assign na ka ng independent at dependent variable dito yung values or scores in statistics will serve as the x values and then the scores in p6 um, let's um, use this one as the values of y now uh, step number one natin kailangan natin i-arrange yung ating data okay into two um, in two variables na yun, okay in a column format so sa aking given problem I think naka-column na siya so skip natin yung ating step number one so next after natin ma-arrange yung ating mga data okay pwede kasi nakarote eh Kaya kailangan naka-column naka format siya para mas okay yung ating mag solution And then next, step number two, guys, we need to get the sum of the values in the X and Y columns. Okay, therefore, yung mga values na meron tayo dito, okay, ang next natin na gagawin is to sum up. Okay, so i-add lang natin sila para makuha natin yung value ni summation of X and then yung summation ng ating Y. So kapag sinama pa natin yung value ng X, so bibigyan tayo niya ng summation of X. And then next is yung value din naman na summation or yung ating values kay y. So dito, kakaroon tayo ng 3 plus 9 plus 10 plus 12 plus um, 7. So that is equal to 41. Next is, para sa y naman, that is equal to 5 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 and plus 8. And that is equals to 40. Okay? So that is our step number 2. I-add lang natin yung mga values ng x tsaka ng y natin. Okay? And the next, first step number 3 guys, okay, we need to square the x values to get x squared, okay? And then get the sum of the square. So, gagawin pala natin, after natin ma-determine yung mga sum ng x and y values natin, ang next natin ang gagawin guys is to add another column. Okay, so mag-add lang tayo ng panibagong column para sa, okay, squared ng ating x values, okay? So, minove ko lang yung ating, um column. Dinigit ko lang siya ko So, mag-add tayo ng panibagong column guys para sa values naman ng ating x squared. Okay? So, individually yung gagawin natin, yung focus natin dito is yung mga x values. Individually, i-squared natin yung mga numbers dito. At sa pinakadulong part is i-add natin sila para sa summation of x squared. Okay? So, simplify natin. 3 times um, 3 or 3 squared is equal to 9. 9 squared is equal to 81. 10 squared is equal to 100. 
12 squared is equal to 144 and then 7 squared is equal to 49 okay so again after natin may uh, may squared lahat ng values na meron kay x ang pinakawali natin gagawin is to add their values yung pinaka naging result okay para sa summation ng x squared okay so add natin 9 plus 81 plus 100 plus 144 plus 49 okay that is equal to 383 Okay, so tip your students, again, reminder lang po, so maging careful tayo sa pag-encode um, ng mga values, okay? Especially kapag sobrang dami ng ating um, size, okay? So kapag sobrang dami ng numbers na encounter na natin, iisang error lang, malaki yung magiging effect yan sa ating final answer, okay? Again, step number 3, i-squared lang natin yung ating value ng x at i-add natin silang lahat, yung result na nakuha natin. So for step number 4, the students, we need to do the same thing kay y, okay? So this time, mag-add lang tayo ulit ng panibagong column, okay? At yun naman ay para kay y values. Okay, so magkakaroon tayo ng panibagong um, column dito para kay y squared naman. So, ang next natin na i-squared naman na values ay yung mga contents naman ngayon or data kay y variable. Okay, so individually, i-squared lang natin sila. And then, i-add natin yung result na may sa pinaka-last part. Okay, so simplify natin. 5 squared is equal to 25. 8 squared is equal to 64. 10 squared, 100. 9 squared, 81. And then, 8 squared, again, is equal to 64. So, next is to sum up, okay? Para sa summation, okay, ng ating y squared. So, add lang natin lahat. So, 25 plus 64 plus 100 plus 81 plus another 64 is equal to 334. Yan. So, syempre, sa pinaka-last part natin ngayon, yung step number 5, ito yung pinaka-last part actually ng pinaka-magiging table natin. Okay? So, for step number 5, we need to multiply the x values to its corresponding y values and then get the sum. So, mag-add tayo ng panibagong column, guys, para sa values naman ngayon ng ating x, y, or product of x and the values of y. So, ang focus natin ngayon dito is yung magkakatapat na values na meron tayo kanina. Okay? ipag-multiply lang natin silang lahat. Okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng 3 times 5, that is equal to 15. 9 times 8 is equal to 72. 10 times 10 is equal to 100. 12 times 9 is equal to um, 108. 7 times 8 is equal to 56. Okay? So, after natin may ipag-multiply yung mga x and y values, again, sa pinaka-last part palagi, kailangan po meron tayong summation. So, as you observe, palagi tayong nagsasum up bawat column, okay, ng mga values na meron sila or data. So, ang, yung mga values kasi na yan, yun yung mismo magiging term, okay, or terms sa formula na ginagamit natin, okay, sa formula na um, dinevelop ni Mr. Carl Person. So, later, gagamitin natin siya, okay, sa ating last step. So, again, add natin 15 plus 72 plus 100 plus 108 plus 56 is equal to 351. Okay, 351. And that's it. So, ito yung pinaka um, contents dapat ng ating magiging pinaka table. Okay? So, ang pinaka last step natin guys is to substitute the values. Okay? Obtain from step number 1 to 5 to the given formula. So, yung values na nakuha natin sa steps number 1 to 5, ilalagay na natin sa mismo formula natin. Okay? So, guys, um, reminder lang, since ang formula natin, by the way, so ito yung formula, right? So, i-paste ko muna siya sa ating mismo screen. So, sa formula natin, mapansin natin dito lahat ng mga terms na nakuha natin eh. Okay? So, isa sa mga tip na pwede kong maibigay sa atin is before tayo mag-substitute, yes, pwede tayo mag-substitute ng directly na lang, pero mas maganda kung ililista muna natin kung ano yung mga na-obtain natin ng values sa ating previous um, steps. Okay? So, meron tayong um, lima. So, number one is the summation of x. Okay? Nakuha natin kanina yan. Next is summation of y. Next is summation of x squared. Followed by the summation of y squared. And then last is the summation of um, xy. Okay? Yan yung mga nakuha natin yung values kanina. And then yung pinakalas naman, syempre, kailangan din natin ng size or yung small letter n. Bakit? Kasi nasa formula natin yun. So again, um, according sa ating previous um, solutions, okay? Ang value ng summation of x equals to 41. Okay, ito siya. So that is equal to 41. Next, summation of y is equal to 40. Ito naman siya. Next, summation of x squared is equal to 383. Okay? So, ito, um, para lang ma-make sure natin na tama yung mga i-substitute natin values mamaya. Okay? Summation of y squared is equal to 334. 334. Sorry. And then, next is the summation of xy. And that is our last um, column. That is equal to 351. 
And then yung size, kung ilan nga ba yung pinag-uusapan natin yung variables or kung ito ay um, patungkol sa scores ng mga students sa statin physics, okay? So, meron tayong um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, meron tayong 5 scores or 5 students na pinag-uusapan, okay? So, the value of n is equal to 5. And then again, for step number 6, okay, we need to substitute the values obtained, okay, from steps number 1 to 5 to the given formula. So, i-remove ko lang itong ating um, steps and then simplify natin yun. So, gamit yung mga variables na meron tayo sa ating um, screen, okay? So, again, the value of r is equal to, okay, simplify lang natin or substitute lang natin, guys, okay, n. So, that is our first value here. n is equal to 5. So, that is equal to 5 times the summation of x times y. Okay, so according sa ating table kanina, summation of x times y is equal to 3, 5, 1. So that is equal to 5 times 3, 5, 1. Okay, minus the summation of x okay, times the summation of y. Okay, so your summation of x, that is equal to 41 times the summation of y is equal to 40. So yun yung magiging numerator natin. Okay, all over or divided by the square root of so, ito yung medyo mahabang term. Square root of, first term is n. Again, the value of n is equal to 5. So, you know, 5 times the summation of x squared. Okay, the summation of x squared, according dito, is equal to 3a3. Okay? So, let's go 3a3. Minus the summation of x. And then, e squared natin ngayon yung value niya. So, the summation of x is equal to 41. Therefore, that is equal to 41 squared. Yun yung first term. And the next is, um, again, meron tayong n. Okay, another n. So, that is equal to 5. Times the summation. Okay, the summation of x, or sorry, y squared. Okay, next term is the summation of y squared. So, that is equal to 334. So, 5 times 334 minus, next natin is the summation of y. And then, e squared din natin yung pinaka-value niya. The summation of y is equal to 40, okay? And then, squared lang natin siya. So, 40 squared, and that's it. So, ito yung pinaka working equation natin para sa ating mismong solution ngayon. Okay, so, guys, um, for example, kung medyo metas naman yung function sa ating calculator, pwede naman natin siya encode directly sa ating calculators. Pero, kung gusto ninyong um, make sure na tama natin solution, pwede mo naman siyang isimplify one by one, okay? So, isa-isa na natin siya. Pwede naman natin gawin yan. So, pag ganun, um, Sige, simplify natin. So, first term natin is, okay, part by part, pwede mo siya simplify ah. So, multiply natin si 5, okay, times, okay, 3, 5, 1. So, ulitin ko dyan, students, be careful sa pag-encode sa ating calculators, okay? 5 times 3, 5, 1, okay, that is equal to 1, 7, 5, 5, okay? So, again, 1, 7, 5, 5, minus, next term is 41 times 40. Okay, so multiply natin sila. 41 times 40, is equal to 1640, okay? 1640 divided by, again, the square root of the ating pinaka, um, denominator, um, 5 times 383, okay? So, multiply natin siya. So, 5 times 383, that is equal to 1915, okay? So, uh, we have 1915 minus 41 squared, or 41 times 41. So, that is equal to 1681. Ito yung first term natin sa denominator, okay? And the next is 5. Okay, meron din tayong 5 times 334. Okay, simplify lang natin siya. So, 5 times 334 is equal to 1670. Okay, 1670 minus 40 squared. Okay, that is equal to 1600. Okay. Next is to simplify individually again. Yung mga terms na meron pa tayo na possible nating may simplify dito. Okay, so subtract natin yung numerator natin. So, sa numerator, that is 1755 minus 1640. Okay. So again, we have 1755 minus 1640, that is equal to 115. So 115 divided by the square root of, okay? Square root of, yan, yung first term is 1915 um, minus 1681. Okay, that is equal to 234, 234 times, the next term naman natin is 1670 minus 16, so that is equal to 70, okay? And then next, kung gusto mong um, i-simplify na yan directly sa inyong calculator, pwede naman. Pero, para mas make sure natin yung tama ating solution, okay, i-multiply muna natin yung nasa radical sign. So, again, that is equal to 115 
divided by the square root of okay so magkakaroon tayo dito ng um, 234 times 70 okay and that is equal to 16,380 okay sa so, mga calculator na medyo mababa yung function pwede nyo gawin dito guys is um, isimplify muna yung pinaka denominator so magkakaroon ka ng 115 all over okay yung square root na ngayon yung answer natin okay square root of 16,380 so at least 4 decimal place yung kukunin natin kapag nasa kalagit na ng solution okay para mas malapit yung makuha natin answer so that is equal to 127.9844 siguro so 9844 and that's it. So, pwede mo na siyang i-divide para sa ating pinaka-final answer. Okay? Now, um, pag divide natin siya, 115, okay, divided by 127.9844, okay, that is equal to, according to my calculator, that is equal to 0 0.8985. Okay? Ito yung 4 decimal place niya. Pero, um, sa ating mismong gagamiting scale mamaya, as you observe, yung strength ng ating correlation is yung mga values na nakalagay doon is yung mga naka 2 decimal place lang, okay? So, doon naka, um, yun, yun yung mga nakalagay na values sa ating mismong scale. So, gagawin natin, kukunin na natin to round up natin siya sa um, at least 2 decimal place lang, okay? So, therefore, the value of R para sa ating final answer, R is equal to 0. Point. Okay, this one is approximately equal to Okay, 0 0.90 or 0 0.9. So, that is our final answer. Now, since, um, for example, you want to interpret the result, okay? Pwede nyo pwede lamatin siya interpret. So, ulitin ko sa mga, um, tulad ng mga binanggit ko kanina, mga facts about the values of correlation R, okay? So, yung sign ng ating value ng R, yun yung mag indicate ng direction. Okay, therefore, makakuha tayo ng dalawang um, interpretation sa ating answer. So, ang direction natin, number one, is positive. So, meron tayong positive correlation. Okay? So, sorry. So, positive correlation or yan, plus sign na lang. And then next is the strength. Okay? So, gamit yung ating um, scale. So, wait. I-plush ko lang sa ating screen. Ito yung ating scale. Okay? So, hanapin naman natin yan. So, saan pasok yung value na nakuha natin na 0 0.9? I think si 0 0.9 is um, ito. Nandito siya sa positive or negative 0 0.80 up to positive or negative 0 0.99. Therefore, the qualitative description is very high. Okay? So, yung strength natin yun is meron tayong very high na correlation. And that's it. So, that is the concept of the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. Okay? Thank you guys and God bless.